In this episode, I wanted to look at the performance characteristics between linear and striped logical volumes using LVM. We will examine what is happening behind the scenes along with some preliminary benchmarks using an AWS i2 8x large instance with 8 800GB SSD disks, 244 gigs of RAM, and 32 virtual cores. Let's say for example that you have a requirement for an extremely fast storage subsystem on a single machine. You have a variety of hardware and software configuration options to choose from, some of which include hardware RAID, software RAID using MD Admin, LVM, or even a mix and match of these. But for today, let's say that we have narrowed the selection down to LVM. So do you choose to use LVM linear or striped logical volumes? And which one has the best performance? As I mentioned a minute ago, we'll be using a machine from Amazon's cloud computing platform called AWS. The machine type is an i2 8x large storage optimized instance with 32 cores, 244 gigs of RAM, an 8 gigabyte internal OS disk, and 8 800 gigabyte SSD disks. And we basically rent this machine for about six bucks and 80 cents an hour. I should note that when using LVM striped logical volumes, typically the more disks you have, the better performance that you'll see. I was originally going to use the AWS HS1 8x large instance type, which has 24 2 terabyte disks, but I stopped after researching the idea. Turns out that to see the best performance on this type of instance, you need to pre-warm the disk. This entails writing to every block on the device. For example, it could take 8 hours or more to pre-warm the disks on this instance type since it has 24 disks. Not wanting to dole out $4.60 per hour to pre-warm the disks, I opted for the i2 8x large instance which uses SSD disks and doesn't suffer from the pre-warming problem. I just wanted to highlight this in case you wanted to replicate my results on similar AWS hardware. Let's briefly review what the system looks like before we get on with the demo. We're going to be using Ubuntu 1404 as the operating system on a machine with 244 gigs of RAM. Here's what the mounts look like along with our 8 gigabyte OS disk, which we talked about earlier. Finally, let's take a look at what disks this system has. Here we have our eight SSD devices, slash dev, XVD, B through I, and they're 800 gigs in size. I just want to highlight this since we'll be referencing these several times throughout this episode today. Before we jump into the demo, we need to configure the environment first. So let's go ahead and install several prerequisites by running apt-get install lvm2, xfs progs used for formatting our lvm volumes using the xfs file system, bwn ng for disk I.O. monitoring, and finally Bonnie for benchmarking the linear and striped LVM logical volumes. At a high level, here is what our design is going to look like. We're going to create physical volumes out of the eight SSD disks, then create a volume group called vol E27 using those physical volumes. And finally, we're going to create two logical volumes, one after the other, used for testing. Now that we have the prerequisites installed, and I have given you an overview of the design, let's run PV display to verify that we have no physical volumes configured. There are none configured, so let's go ahead and create our eight physical volumes for our eight 800 gig SSD disks by running PV create slash dev xvd b through i. Okay, now that we have the physical volumes configured, Let's go ahead and configure a volume group called vol E27 for episode 27 and provide the physical volumes to use. Let's run VG create vol E27 slash dev xvd b through i. We can verify this worked by running VG display. So you can see that we have a volume group called vol E27 and it's roughly 6 terabytes in size. At this point, we pretty much have things configured so we can dive into the demos. But before I do that, let's just recap. We have our eight SSD disks configured as physical volumes. Then we created a volume group called vol E27 using those physical volumes. Finally, for the demos today, we're going to create two logical volumes, one after the other, called vol E27 root. One as a linear volume and the other a striped volume by the way, the B through I in those boxes under the linear and striped headings 
are my attempt to display the physical volume SSD devices. So let's get started by creating a linear volume by running lvcreate extends 100% free name root vol e27, which will create a logical volume called root using all the available space in the vol e27 volume group. Next, let's verify it worked by running LV display. Personally, I like to use the slash dev mapper paths for accessing these types of devices. So let's verify that it exists. Looks good. Let's also run fdisk l slash dev mapper vol e27 root to verify that the new block device was created and that it's roughly the size that we expect. Finally, to benchmark the device using Bonnie, we first need to create a file system on the device and then mount it. Today, we're going to use XFS since it is used in many large-scale computing environments and allows you to quickly create a file system on a large chunk of disk. In our case, we're using roughly 6 terabytes. Let's run MKFS XFS slash dev mapper vol e27 root. Then create the mount point by running mk directory vol e27. Finally, let's mount it by running mount slash dev mapper vol e27 slash vol e27. And as always, let's verify our results. Okay, so that went pretty quickly. So at this point, we've taken our eight 800 gigabyte SSD disks and turned them into a roughly six terabyte linear volume mounted as slash vol e27. At this point, we're ready to do some benchmarking. I'm going to open two terminal windows. In the first terminal window, we're going to run the Bonnie benchmarking software. Then in the second terminal window, we can monitor the SSD disk activity. The hope is that we can differentiate linear versus striped logical volumes, both by disk activity and our benchmark results. Okay, so let's get the Bonnie benchmarking software sorted out first. I found this pretty nice blog posting about how to run Bonnie benchmarks along with a useful chain of commands to run. I've linked to this in the episode notes below if you're interested in reading more about it. I'm just going to copy and paste the command as it's really long and point it at our vol e27 linear volume mount. Basically we're running the Bonnie benchmarking software along with taking into account the amount of RAM this machine has, making sure that we write well above the limit. In this case, we're going for twice the amount of RAM. The reason for this is that we don't want the system to cache our benchmark in RAM, thus blowing the result. Before I start the benchmark, let's jump over to the second terminal window. Here we're going to watch the SSD disk activity to see how the reads and writes are spread across the disks. While doing research for this episode, I came across a very useful utility called BWMNG. And we will use this tool to monitor reads and writes to each SSD device. So here we have the software running, updating every half second and watching our SSD devices slash dev xvd b through i. I've pasted the exact command in the episode notes below. We are finally ready to run our benchmark now that we have the command ready to go and our monitoring pointed at our devices. Let's start the benchmark in the first window and then jump over to the second window where we have the monitoring software running. Looks like something is happening, but what is really interesting is that we are only hitting the first SSD device, slash dev xvdb, and this behavior happened throughout the entire benchmark. I should mention that the entire benchmark took over an hour to run, so what you're seeing is actually a heavily edited summary. So what is actually happening here? Why is one SSD device only seeing the read and write traffic? Well, it is probably best described through a series of diagrams. When using linear logical volumes, you are essentially connecting these devices in series or daisy chaining them together. So the reads and writes happen like this. Once one device is full, it flows over to the next, etc. Kind of like a waterfall effect. So in this example, even though we have eight SSD devices, our benchmark is only hitting the first device. Okay, now that we have our results and know a little about how linear volumes work, let's move on to how striped volumes work. But first, let's clean up the linear volume. First, let's unmount the disk. Next, we can destroy the logical volume. We can do that by running lv remove slash dev vol e27 root. Okay, so let's just jump back to the diagrams for a minute. 
We still have our vol E27 volume group. We just need to create a new striped logical volume called vol E27 root. Let's head to the console and do that by running LV create extends 100% free stripes 8 stripe size 256 name root vol E27. Easy enough, right? And you will notice this command looks almost exactly the same as the earlier version, just with the added stripes and stripe size options. These rather simple options dramatically change the performance profile as you'll see in a minute. I just wanted to mention that it's not always clear by looking at LV display whether you're running in linear or striped mode. You can see that the default LV display output does not tell you anything interesting in that regard. So you can use LVS segments to give you very little information about the logical volume. But if you're looking for detailed information about the logical volume, try running LV display VM. And as you can see, there's a bunch of output. Let's just scroll up here for a second. So in this first block, we have the default output up at the top. Then down here, we have the detailed info about the stripe size and the devices that back it. Just as we did last time, let's go ahead and create a file system on the device by running mkfs xfs slash dev mapper vol e27 root. Then let's mount it by running mount slash dev mapper vol e27 root slash vol e27. And finally, let's verify it's mounted correctly. Just as we did last time, let's configure the Bonnie benchmark to run in the first terminal window and use the second for the disk monitoring software. Let's just quickly hop over to the second window and verify there's no disk activity before running the benchmark. Looks good. So let's execute the benchmark and then watch the disk activity. At this point, you can see that all of the SSD disks are getting exercised. While doing research for this episode, it was explained that the writes go to the disk in a round robin fashion. As you can see, this certainly seems to be the case. And this time around, the benchmark completed much more quickly because we're actually using all of the disks. So let's just recap with a couple diagrams and some closing notes. Linear volumes, like we saw in the earlier example, write to the disk in series. As one disk fills up, the next fills, and so on. This is in comparison to how striped logical volumes work. With striped logical volumes, writes head to disk in a round robin fashion so you will actually see much better performance because we're using more disks and not creating hotspots or saturating one disk in the array. This is probably a good place to leave this episode, as I think this one slide highlights the entire discussion. However, our results do raise some interesting questions. These are actually ones that you'll likely run into too if you venture down this path. Here are the performance numbers between linear and striped logical volumes. As you can see, striped logical volumes absolutely kill linear volume types. What is interesting is that I actually expected to see higher numbers, specifically for sequential reads for the striped volume type. AWS is a bit of a black box in that if we had physical hardware, we could play around with various topologies to see if we could get better performance. Personally, I think we're saturating some sort of link, but it's hard to diagnose without knowing the topology or having access to the physical hardware. The real goal of this episode was to teach the difference between linear and striped logical volumes, and I think we've done that so far. But if I had to implement this for a project I was working on, there are likely other bits I'd want to test and profile. For example, try other hardware topology designs to make sure that we have IO channel separation and are not saturating a link somewhere. Maybe try other file systems, or align LVM stripe size and file system block sizes. And let's not forget about tuning for your specific workload. There's also some issues with the way I did these tests. For example, the disk activity monitor might throw off our benchmarks due to CPU usage or something. Also, maybe XFS wasn't a good file system choice. Not to mention that if this was for a real project, I'd have to run multiple Bonnie tests and average the results. But since this is just an illustration, I did not want to spend too much money on running AWS instances for long periods of time. Personally, this episode highlights what I love about Amazon's cloud computing platform. Typically as a sysadmin, you'll often be asked to spec something out for a particular project without having any hardware. 
you are essentially guessing, hoping, and then ultimately praying that the hardware you spent tens of thousands of dollars on will meet your needs. But with AWS, you get to fire up beefy instances, test your ideas, and then come up with a working plan, typically within hours. As was demonstrated today, we used hardware which typically cost many thousands of dollars for several hours to do some tests, which ultimately allowed us to get a firm idea of what we can expect on this hardware. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.